What's going on? King Shrats here, back with another video on the channel. And as you already didn't know, because I said it before, we got a nice steakhouse dinner tonight. I got four, comes out to about 22 to 24 ounces of sirloin tips. I marinated these overnight. Cream spinach. I got fries with cheese and broccoli. Broccoli. My brain's not working full time. You got to bear with me. It's been a very long day. Bacon and cheese. And of course, I got my muscles. I love muscles. If you're coming from the gram, you've seen me eat muscles all the time. Why? Number one, they're good. <laughs> Why else would you eat them? And number two, they actually have a lot of vitamins and minerals in them, more than you'd think. You might want to Google that, take a look at it, because it, it's kind of crazy. And when I found that out, I tried to incorporate that into my diet. But without further ado, oh, and by the way, man, I was about to start recording, and my house is not soundproof itself, the whole house. Somebody's alarm was going off for about 10 minutes and they didn't get it, one of my neighbors. So I couldn't record, so now my food's starting to get cold already. And I don't mind eating cold food. The issue is, is I like my first bites to add a heat to it, but this isn't going to have them. Not going to matter anyway. I know it's still going to taste good. I haven't tried anything yet, but I'm so ready to try these. Also on the side, you can see right here, this is a little bit of ranch. I don't want to stab the camera. Um, it's Greek yogurt ranch, and I got the rest of the cheese right here, just in case I want to get some dippage with my fries. And I'm drinking, move my hand out of my nice little mug we got going on. Hold on, let's get the mug on the screen. Move your hand. There you go. Got my nice little mug right here. And inside is Arnold Palmer sugar-free half iced tea, half lemonade. It's one of my favorite drinks that I drink. And also, it's got a little, little ad. Look, see, it's custom. A little custom on the back right there. So, that's me. King Trats. Weird name, right? And no, it's not a LeBron thing. I've explained this a few times, but I'm gonna explain how I got the name King Shrath. But let me let me let me give you some food first. I can't even tell if I'm cutting it on the bias at this point because I can't see. Because I don't really eat my food backwards, but we're we're doing the whole for the content thing eating. And it doesn't really look right in my eyes, but whatever. So here we go. First bite. You know I like that fat on that steak. It's marinated. Marination. Oh, it's so juicy. I marinated it. And I already explained it in the video. But I marinated it overnight. And it's so juicy. Mmm. A little cream spinach. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. I use a little bit of garlic parmesan. I made wings yesterday. So I use a little bit in the cream spinach instead of just using cream. I don't really use cream in my cream spinach anyway because I tend not to eat food that's too uh, fatty. Who wants some? I said this before, there's just not much in the world that goes better than cheese and bacon. It's just one of the goat combos. It's like peanut butter and jelly. It just works. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let me get you. Let me get you. Let me get you. Let me get you a nice one. The musk. I don't need sauce. And by the way, if you hear this, I got a little container here that I'm going to chuck them into this way or not. Crowding my plate up. But the name King Shrats actually came about I'm gonna eat from the back that sounds horrible don't it the name King Tratch actually came about in high school this was a name given to me by my teammates because I was the type of player that didn't listen at all so our coach had a rule I thought it was a stupid rule and I wasn't afraid to say that we weren't allowed to wear headbands. Now, I've always been the type of person that when I don't like something, even if it was from a teacher or a coach or something, I would voice my opinion. So, one day, I decided my senior year to wear a headband, but in practice. I figured I'd test the waters to see what I could get away with. So, I have the headband on. And we're doing warm-ups. Coach doesn't really say anything to me. 
But then finally, true story, coach says, hey, LeBron, take the headband off. <laughs> so me, I didn't take it off. Instead, I tried to haggle, you know, make a little waiter. I decided that would be a good time to tell him that the headband gives me power. I play better. So, I said, let me play in practice with the headband on. If I'm trash, I'll never ask about the headband again. We were a good team that year. We were on our way to the state playoffs, um, that kind of thing. I think at the point we were like maybe like seven, seven and one, something like that. We ended up finishing the season like 21 and seven or six or something like that. We didn't win the state championship, but whatever. I said, if I'm trash today, I'll never wear it again. Mm. So, he said, all right. So in practice, I'm out there body in caps. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say that I was the best in basketball. I'm 6'1". I was a linebacker in college. So I was more of like a goon. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you might not be old enough, but like Charles Oakley or like, who's, who's an enforcer these days? Y'all don't really have enforcers, but back in the 90s, basketball players just just close line people for no reason. I was one of them. Like, I, I would get, like, a double-double on a good game. You know, like, I think my my highest scoring game, I had, like, 28. But a lot of times during the season, I would get, like, 12 points, 10 rebounds. I was, like, that kind of player. You know what I'm saying? Like, like remember the Birdman on the Heat? Kind of like that. Like, I wasn't out there raining threes, but, you know, I get the rebounds. And, you know, I set my teammates up and you know, set the screens. I was that dude. So, that day in practice, I started pulling up. <laughs> I started shooting jumpers. I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm keeping this head, man. So I'm hitting these jumpers, you know, grabbing every rebound, screaming, ah, after every rebound, like I'm crazy. So the coach, after practice, is like, (laughs) the coach after practice is like, so the headband gives you powers, huh? So I said, you learn where this headband in the game. If we lose, I'll never wear it again. We went all the way to the state tournament. <laughs> I swear to God. I ended up getting all confidence <laughs> with the headband on. So, because he called me LeBron, the running joke after that from my teammates was King Shrats. So, we started a weird thing where, like, there was a kid on our team named Prince. I don't want to give names out, but Prince so and so. And we had, like, the royal family. So, everybody else had, like, royalty names, but I was King Shrats. I was a captain of the team. And not that it necessarily mattered, but. So, the King Shrats thing. I just kind of used it, and I had a wristband, and in my high school yearbook picture, you can see me wearing the wristband on my arm, so I wore it on my bicep, you know, we were cool, and it said King Trash. So, my Instagram, my Instagram, America Online screen name, is AOL days, was King Trash, and I got to college, college football, I'm a freshman, I made the starting squad, eventually, like week four, didn't matter. But a lot of people before that, because my way of, of keeping home with me, I went to school in the Midwest, was to wear that wristband. I wore it on my leg, so on my calf, in football games and Pratt and, and whatever. So when my teammates got a hold of it, they started mockingly calling me King Shrats in the sense of, you know, who do you think you are kind of deal. Which was cool with me. You know, you bring that on yourself. But it made me feel comfortable. I was away from home for the first time. You know, I'm 17 as a freshman. So, I'm sorry for the cut this, because I'm taking the whole thing with me. It's actually 10 years old. And they started calling me that, mockingly, but I didn't care. By the time I was a senior, one of my close friends would call me King all the time. It just kind of stuck with me. So when Instagram first came out, I didn't start the account as, you know, trying to do anything other than it being my personal account. But I called it King Shreds. And I never thought that I'd end up here being called the same thing. You get what I'm saying? But it's kind of too late to change my name now because it's what I've always run with. You know, people in real life, some people do, mockingly, but my name's Dave. Some of y'all call me Dave. I don't care about all that stuff. Like, I don't look at it like I'm cooler than anybody. But that's where the King Shrats thing came from. Started as a joke, you know, 15 years ago, and here I am. Weird, but true. 
Oh, steak is so good. Do y'all put stuff on your steak? I've been asking people that. Every time I make steak and I post it on the gram, steak was on sale. Even this, mad cheap. It was like two pounds for like, I think like $12. That's cheap as hell. <laughs> like seriously. I don't know why, but I guess meat's getting cheaper right now. Maybe because of the situation we're in. They're like buying meat. I was like, I'm stocking up. So I got like five steaks in my freezer. This isn't even the whole package. It's like a little over half, but I never noticed that people didn't really eat their steaks the way that I ate them until I got to school. Where I come from, nobody eats a well-done steak. Nobody. Not in my family, not in my friends. And when I was younger, we didn't eat a lot of steak in my house because we couldn't afford it. You know, I didn't grow up well off. My family didn't have a lot of money or anything like that. So, we didn't really eat steak. The first time I had steak, completely true. My friend Sam, you see him in some of my YouTube videos, you see him on my live streams, podcasts, whatever have you. Eating at his house as a kid was the first time I had ever had steak. Ever. Before that, you know, we were like eating chicken wings and french fries from the Chinese spot. And then I moved to the suburbs and I started hanging out with like, you know, Sam Sicilian. One of my closest friends was Jamaican. We were like United Nations, man, which was really cool to see other cultures and stuff like that because I wasn't really hip to that when I was younger because I, I kind of, you know, I'm not even going to use my knife because it's tender. I lived in the projects and where I was from, everybody was, you know, for the most part black. There's a few white people and a few Hispanics sprinkling out of there. But, you know, my parents didn't really let me go anywhere because it was like crime. You know, you get the idea. So, couldn't really hang out. When I moved to the suburbs, we were allowed to move about freely. It was weird. You know, we could go on our bikes to our friend's house. But anyway, Sam invites me over for dinner. His family, he's having a steak. Everybody gets a whole steak. I was like, holy crap, like, I didn't know people live like this. <laughs> this is not even a joke, man. And his dad, obviously, older Sicilian guy, you know, still knows that we're all very cool. But when I was there, he asked me how I wanted my steak. <laughs> and I was like, how do you eat a steak? I didn't know you get levels of steak. He said, anything over medium is no good. You overcook it, it's no good. <laughs> That's what he told me. So I got medium, and that always stuck with me. And it was a very good steak. Now, the other party fell about putting stuff on your steak that I didn't know about. I will never forget this. I still tell Sam this story. And his dad still laughs about it. Till this day. I'm at his house. With my steak. And the steak was phenomenal. Right? But I'm thinking like a cheeseburger. You know, a burger. So what did I ask for? Ketchup. So... I asked his mom for ketchup, and she didn't give me, like, you know, anything judgmental. She gave me the ketchup. I had the ketchup, and I put it on. So his dad, from across the table, I'll never forget this, he had glasses. <laughs> his glasses were, like, right here. You know how, like, a lot of people, the older people have glasses, but they're, like, never on their eyes? From the bottom of his eyes, he's, like, and he's staring at me. So I had the steak, right? Just like this. I'm, like, I'm looking at him. I can't even think, man. Finally, his dad says, Listen, uh, I don't know what you do at your house, but, you know, you're not supposed to put ketchup on a steak. <laughs> you're not supposed to do it. And his mom's defending me, you know, let him eat it how he wants to eat it. He's like, No, I'm, you know, you, you spent all this time making a steak, he's gonna ruin it with the ketchup. So, I didn't really know back then, but a lot of people, and I agree with them think that it's taboo to put stuff on your steak. Here I am eating steak with a fork in my hand. I'm not really supposed to do that in the steakhouse either, but that always stuck with me. And my dad still to this day doesn't put anything on his steak. He says it ruins the taste. So I think it's more about how you live. Because when I got to college, 
Obviously, all my teammates were really cool. I just knocked over a shell. There wasn't even anything in it. That's lucky. Look, it was empty. Oh, it's right there. Come on. Cool. Most of them grew up in places like that. I grew up when I was younger. So, we're on spring break. And three of the four of us under, you know, AR stick the way that I get it. One of them, you know, he never really was a steakhouse kind of guy. And he looked at us like we were crazy. And we're like, yo, why are you looking at us like that? He's watching, see, he ordered meatloaf at a steakhouse. <laughs> I swear to you. But we're eating steak and shrimp. Right, we're on spring break, kind of like we're like ballers. We weren't. I had no money in my pocket and I spent all of it like on that one meal. But. And the tattoo. That's a whole different story. But. He's looking at me like we're crazy. Finally, I'm like, yo, what's, what's up? What's good? You know, I'll clean it up. Because, you know, back then I was a little cooler than I am now. The way that I speak now is not the way that I spoke when I was younger. If you catch my drill. I'm older now cleaned up my speech you know I don't I don't speak like that anymore some people will say that it sounds some people say it sounds like Barack and whatever have you but when you have to speak professionally you know this is not my job ever you can't speak like you're trying to be cool trust me so anyway I'm like yo what's, what's up what's wrong he's like you stay red man yeah it's medium rare he said, I like my meat cooked. What's the matter with you? He's looking like I'm crazy. I said, bro, have you ever had anything less than that? He thought, he thought you couldn't eat meat that way because like you, you can get sick and stuff like that. Which I get. My whole point is, I'm not going to judge you because you like a well-done steak. Personally, I think it tastes like jerky. But at the same time, I think it just comes from your environment. I know a lot of my relatives only eat steak well done. We were the bougie ones, right? I told you on the other one. So, we didn't eat steak well done. Medium rare. Medium. I think my dad eats medium rare. My sister and my mom, the rest of my family is medium, right? But, I think it just comes from how you were, your environment. You know, if I was around a whole bunch of people growing up, that ate it a certain way then I would have eaten it that way but I wasn't you know so this is how I eat my steak I never understood why people bother people about how they eat food anyway I made tacos again I said this in the last mukbang I did this time because the first time I used corn tortillas and everybody was like oh corn tortillas you're supposed to heat them up they were heated up but I said in the video, I'm like, yo, I'm going to heat them up one as I go. Because I was making them as I go. And I didn't want to heat them up and then sit there with, you know, the rest of them going to get cold. So they're looking like, yo, you're going to heat tortillas up. And I'm like, so this time I use flour. You know those on real tortilla? Like, it says on the box, flour tortilla, bro. <laughs> like, why is it not a tortilla? I let people eat what, you know? If you, people suggest to me different ways to eat stuff all the time. And to me, I'm like, cool, I might try that. Because there's no right or wrong way to eat food. Unless you're doing something like eating raw, like, you know, something that can get you sick. You know, you don't want to eat raw chicken. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But whether you like it fried or baked or you want ketchup on it, eat it that way. I personally don't like ketchup. You will rarely if ever see me eating ketchup. I just feel like it's a boring condiment. Like, it makes it taste like ketchup. You know what I'm saying? And I guess that's a weird thing to say considering I'm eating cheese and cheese, but cheese is the goat. So I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> I'm just, oh, I'm a strange dude, man. I'm definitely a strange dude. Definitely been a crazy week too. In the beginning of the week, we are supposed to go back to work I said before, work in the fitness industry, so some of the restrictions are being lifted. I was at work for three days. 
We gotta go home. So here I am. That was all the fat right there. Mm. You gotta eat the fat on steak. Don't look, just eat the fat. It's all flavor. So, three days back inside. I was so ready to go back to man. But, things happen. We move. You know? I'm sure there's a lot of people out there with a lot worse problems than I have. So, I've never been one to complain about anything. Because, other true story. My whole life changed when I was in college. I had something happen to me that made me say, your life it's not as bad as you think it is. When I was in college, I had a minivan. It was purple. Blurple. Blue purple. It had 250,000 miles on it. But I didn't care because they got me from A to B. So, where are the muscles in my muscles, bro? Just a second time. It's probably floating in there somewhere, but... No, I'll never go. My senior year, while I'm driving home, the transmission decides it wants to bust, and the car dies on me. So now, I don't have a car. I didn't live on campus. In the state of Iowa, in the winter, this was an exceptionally cold winter. I swear to you, with the wind chill, it was negative 40 degrees at one point. I'm not built for that. So, to finish out my degree, football's over, you know. My career as a college athlete is over at this point. But I had to finish one more semester before I got my bachelor's. So, at the same time, I'd been dating somebody for, I don't know, like one and a half years, something like that. And we broke up. So I was in my feelings, I had no car. I thought I had the worst life in the world. Even though here I am on a full scholarship. <laughs> you know, I was like, but you don't have perspective back then. So anyway, I started walking back and forth in the winter. I'm listening to all this like sad music because I'm just mad and angry and thought I was depressed. I wasn't. Mental illness is not mental illness is nothing to joke about. A whole different ballroom. But I thought I was depressed. I wasn't depressed. I was just sad. There is a difference. Anyway, after walking for the four billionth time and cursing out anything and anything that was in my way while I was walking, finally, freezing cold weather. It snows a lot out there. I'm walking back to campus. The campus is probably about 15, 20 minute walk. It was a decent walk in the cold. While I'm walking, a dude wheels past me on a wheelchair and he's missing the bottom half of his left leg and he says hope you're having a good day it's cold out here huh smiling and I'm just like yo I'm sitting here bitching because I can walk to school and this man doesn't have his leg and is in a better mood than me and I'm not saying that he has a reason to be sad either but I know that I'm happy having both my legs, and he's looking with a better perspective than me. And my point is, is that no matter how bad your situation is, there's someone out there in a worse situation than you, not complaining as much as you are, you know? Like, I never complained about my car, even though it was a piece of crap, because I had a car. It was mine. I didn't have to worry on nobody for a ride. You know, I could put gas in it. I knew I was going to eat. You know, like, the people out there that, they, they don't know what they're going to eat tomorrow. Here I am sitting on camera eating steak and talking to you fine people. So what the hell am I going to complain about? Because I can't go to work. Yeah, I want to go to work. But... There are people in worse situations than me. And 
Same goes with whoever's watching this. I'm sure there's somebody's watching this right now who has something going on in their life that is not fun. I'm not like I don't want to say it. It's bad, but there are people out there going through worse things than you are, and I know it sucks. It's not good. And there are people out there who are going through the worst case scenario type of stuff. But you're still here. So. Sometimes you have to look at perspective because. There are times in life where you're really down. You're not as down as you think you are. And there are times in life where you're really up. And you're not as up as you think you are. So, try to stay balanced through it all. We all have crappy days. We all lose people that we love. I've lost several this year. You know? And you still got to find a way to keep going through all that. Because you're still here. And there are other people that would love to be in your situation in that sense. Because there are people out there, as I'm saying this, that might not be here tomorrow. So just live to the fullest every single day. And understand that you're needed by somebody. You're loved by somebody. And you are wanted by somebody even if you don't see it you know I've been really down before to the point that I just kept saying when's it gonna get better you know and some of the biggest success stories that you'll ever hear about are from people who have been really 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 down y'all know who Steve Harvey is if you don't He's a comedian. Guy has a talk show. Um, he did Family Feud. I was watching the thing on him where he was talking. In 1991, he was sleeping in his own car. He had $35 in his pocket. I swear to you, I, ju I just watched this um, last night. $35 in his pocket. And he's in his car. Now mind you, Steve Harvey's worth a lot of money these days, right? But it wasn't always like that. Sleep in his car, nobody to rely on, by himself. Basically said he was in tears, like, when is this going to get better? Lord, please help me, give me a sign, things like... There's two in here. So, no, one in the other, I don't know where, but... When is this going to get better? I don't know how... Give me a sign, should I quit? Because he was a struggling comedian at this point. $35 in his pocket. So, he decides he wants to call his house and check the messages. And there's a guy on his answering machine that says, hey, Steve, um, this is so-and-so from the Apollo Theater, a very famous theater in Harlem. A lot of acts have come through it. A lot of famous acts have been booed off that stage. It's a brutal stage. doesn't matter. But if you can get here by Sunday, we've got a gig for you. <laughs> he's, in, he's in Florida. So, he starts crying again. There's no way I'm going to make it to New York with $35 in my pocket. So, someone give me a sign. I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess this is my sign that I should quit because I can't get there. So, he decides to call us home again. Get the answer machine. This time there's a new message from a guy. In Florida, telling him, Hi, I said Steve, blah, blah. I want you to come down here. Um, I forgot where he said he was, but he was like a three-hour drive away. Um, you know, the gig is for $150. We think you're funny. Come on down. This It's Thursday at this point, so he gets there on Friday. Um, gets there on Friday. Supposedly, he kills it. The guy says, yo, we really liked you. He didn't say, yo, we really liked you. We want you to stay here for another day. Give you another $150. So now, he's like, I have $300 if I stay. Calls a guy from the Apollo. The guy says, no, the gig's still open. Does the gig, gets a flight. They're doing cheap flights to New York 
from Florida. Goes goes up there for ninety nine dollars with two briefcases. All he had on him, he had nothing, no no belonging on him. Left his car in the airport. It says he gets to the Apollo. He's starving. They let him leave for like twenty minutes to go get chicken. Well, other than that, he's in the waiting room. And he, these people weren't famous either. But he meets D.L. Hughley, Jamie Foxx, and The Rock. I'm not joking. This is like you can look this up. I just watched this thing. It's crazy. And he meets these people. They're on before him. Every single one of them got got booed off stage. But him. Steve went on and he killed it. The rest is history, as they say. You get what I'm saying? Like, trust me. You gotta find a way to keep going. I'm paraphrasing that thing, by the way. There are other things in there, but I don't want to see her talking forever. You gotta find a way, man. That's where this tattoo that people don't understand. You can see it. My ha 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 ha's, right? With a Joker smile. Not close this tattoo. I've had this tattoo for a while now. Symbolizes. People don't know the story of that tattoo, but that tattoo symbolizes for me that the Joker in the movie, The Dark Knight. Obviously, there's been other iterations, but specifically, I'm not talking about the psycho aspect. The fact that he got thrown off a building and he was laughing. So, I didn't take it literally. I took it as a symbolism of you've got to find a way to laugh through the BS. Like, whether someone says something about you, whether something's done, no matter what it is, my thing is to laugh because one day it won't be like this, you know? And this is not a joke. I've told parts of this story before, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm running out of food. But in 2014, my house burned down. I had just moved in. I moved in in the beginning of March. And by March 27th, I'll never forget the day, the whole house went up in flames. There was a faulty wire, a dryer, turned the dryer on, house started burning. No joke. So, standing outside, that's the fire department, are trying to put the fire out of my house. Watching my house burn to the ground. And my reaction was to laugh. No joke. Yes, it sucked. It was terrible. I had no clothes, literally no clothes, but the clothes on my back. My dog, who was a puppy, is about two months old at that point, on a leash, sitting outside, in my underwear, while there's a crowd of people watching my house burn down at 9 o'clock in the morning. Not a joke, man. And I laughed. And someone looked at me like I was crazy. They knew it was my house. Neighbors, whatever have you. What are we laughing at? I was like, man, this sucks. And they're like, yeah, so why are you laughing? Because in my head, I knew that the grind to get back into my house, living in hotels, you know, with my dog. I did for about a year, living in hotels with my dog. I knew that grind was going to be terrible. Oh, no. Three second rule? Oh, it's still on the shelf. Look, it didn't come up. I knew that grind was going to be terrible. I just don't want to work with me. Come on, muscle. Sometimes this happens with muscles. They, like, hold on. And you got to, like, pry it open. But I knew that that grind was going to be terrible. But I also knew that one day I would look back at that very moment and laugh about it. And be like, yo, that was terrible. But it's in the past now and I can just kind of laugh about it. And guess what? This very house that I'm sitting in right now is the rebuilt version of that house. And it sucked. And I hated it. And I hated living in hotels. Hated not having a stove to cook in. I hated all that stuff. But I just kept going. Because I knew one day it wouldn't always be like that. And here I am. In the rebuilt version. That is nicer than the first version that I bought. You know? And I look back at those days. Of the hotels. And, and that kind of stuff. And I just laugh. It sucked man. But I made it back. And there's been other BS that's happened along the way, but I'm here, and I'm still moving, and I'm going to keep moving. And who knows? Maybe in five years from now, I'll be sitting making another video, 
or doing something else, but I could make another video and there could be more of you watching. And I will put a link to this video where I'm talking about that, saying, man, you remember that? Because it's the same thing. I remember doing live streams with one person in it. And, you know, I remember posting pictures of my food when no one looked at it. And the only people that did were people that I knew that thought I was an idiot. You know what I'm saying? But that's the whole point. I love you all. Keep grinding. Keep living. Keep working. The Rock had $7 in his pocket, and he tells the story all the time, right? And now uh, he's The Rock. Nobody thought he was going to be that back then. So follow your dreams. Chase your dreams. Reach those dreams. And don't let the reason that you fail be because you were afraid or because you were lazy. Let me sip my tea on that one. I love y'all. I'm out. We doing more of these. I got more reviews coming. I got more cooking videos coming. I got more mukbangs coming. We're gonna do it all. I just enjoy making the content and I enjoy you guys watching it. So please, I love y'all. We'll be back. Hand signs they made it to YouTube. You know the deal. We out. Bye.